Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm here to talk a little bit about AMD's Big Navi 2 release and my thoughts and my reaction. And I have to say I'm thoroughly impressed with what they've been able to cook up. We knew they had something cooking. They were very, very quiet, very, very smug, coy even. Just kind of quietly just sitting back, letting NVIDIA uh, do what they do. And they've been letting them do what they do for a little while. You have to cast your mind back to March 2017 with the release of the GTX 1080 Ti. That card, um, there has been no AMD graphics card that's been released that's been able to outperform that card um, at the high end. So just keep that in mind. It's now October 2020. AMD have been promising and they have been, uh, you know, making claims. And it seems that they've delivered on them as well. They've released three graphics cards, um, RX 6800, R8 6800 XT, and RX 6900 um, XT. So um, all of these cards are going to cater to different segments of the market. But the main thing is all of these cards can play at 4K. Like you can spend $580 and game at 4K. Now, it's ridiculous. I mean, why didn't you come out with this sooner? It's what I was wishing. I mean, my bank balance would be considerably more happy, but I get so much joy testing these these uh, these new hardware releases that, for me, is always just worth the money just to spend it. So let's talk a little bit about some of AMD's claims. They claimed that they were aiming for and will achieve a 50% performance per watt increase over RDNA 1. Not only have they achieved that, they've been able to exceed that and get up to 54% increase over RDNA 1. In, and um, I have to say that it looks like it's absolutely true as well, because if you have a look at how it goes up against the uh, RX RTX 3080, um, you're looking at two cars that are trading blows, but for the most part, it looks like the 6800 XC is getting the best of the scrap. It's completely destroying the uh, 3080 in Battlefield 5 at ultra settings. Beats it in Borderlands at badass settings. That was the game that kind of let me know that AMD have definitely come out swinging. When I saw that on the Ryzen 3 release, um, they showed that off. And I ran it with my, 39, my RTX 3090 myself. And I was very, I was like, wow, that, that's actually... A solid performance there. Now moving on to Call of Duty at ultra settings. Obviously, no ray tracing is being used in any of these titles, as far as we're aware. But that ain't the point. It's still just destroying the RTX 3080 100 and uh, 48 frames per second in Modern Warfare. Uh, losers in Division Two. A uh, slight narrow winner in Doom Eternal completely destroys the RTX 3080 in Horizons and um, Forza Horizon Four. Slight victory in Gears Five. Uh, losers in Resident Evil Three. Slightly trades blows in Tomb Raider, you'd have to say, and and wins in Wolfenstein Youngblood by a small amount. So overall, as a company, you're going to choose where your games perform the best. But you're looking at two cards that are going to be trading blows. But when the um, RX 6800 XD wins, it wins um, decisively. And that's the main thing. Um, and all of this, at a total ball power of 300 watts. And I've seen my... Um, my RTX 3090, sorry about that, should have turned my phone off. I've seen my RTX 3090 uh, pull it up to 384 watts, and you're actually seeing it play in the background now, Wolfenstein, and th there's the proof, it can do that. But um, these cards are going to be operating um, a lot more efficiently, um, with a lot more efficiency, and um, it's a shown NVIDIA, you really should have went with that 7 nanometer. you should have paid TSMC what they wanted. And, and built your card on the 7 nanometer node. Now they have to backtrack, and um, there's been news that NVIDIA are going to start building future cards on the 7 nanometer node. So we'll see what happens there. Um, another thing that's actually really important, let's, let's, let's move back a little bit. The R8 6800, don't sleep on this graphics card. 60 compute units, 1850 megahertz game clock or base clock, whatever you want to call it, 20, 2105 megahertz boost clock and um 16 gigabytes of gddr6 you get 16 gigabytes even at 580 dollars you're getting 16 gigabytes and 
at total board power 250 watt and it beats the um, RTX 2080 Ti all ends up literally one or two games where they're close division two and um, Wolfenstein Youngblood but apart from that is a clean sweep so if, if I was someone that was looking to get the uh, RTX 3070 you got to give yourself a little bit of time to think about it because not only are you getting double the VRAM you're getting a card that decisively faster than the RTX 2080 Ti and um, it's only $80 more than the RTX 3070 if you can even get one for MSRP which I very much doubt it so man it's a good time to be a gamer it has to be said and all of these cards can do 4k gaming all of you guys that are saying 1440p is the best I guarantee you some of you guys are going to be tempted to dip your toe into 4k gaming and enjoy that crisp clear image and now that we've got monitors and displays that exceed 60 hertz there's no excuse for you to say that 60 hertz is uh disgraceful so let's move on to something of note and something that gave me a little bit of pause is the 6900 xt or the rx 6900 xt if you really want to be uh precise about things AMD go by rule your games at 4K and I would have to concur with that sentiment because it's beating the RTX 3090 in Battlefield, Borderlands 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and it's also beating it by a considerable amount in Forza Horizon 4. I'm going to have to check that out when I get my own but we'll see about that. Gears, Gears 5 and um, it's, it loses one or two and, and trades blows so if this thing's got any headroom to overclock, then um, I have to say it. Like we're looking at a new performance king here, and all for a nice tidy nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Now that for me, that I, that I welcome that news because I was always going to buy one of these cards anyway. I've already set aside the funds, and I'm I'm quite happy that I'm going to have a bit more money in the bank than I initially thought I would. I thought they, I thought to myself, if they're gonna bring out a card that can beat an RX RTX 3090 they're going to charge at least $1200 so they're saying from $999 so in the UK we're probably looking at £950 or maybe $920 we'll see but hey I'm definitely getting the RX 6900 XT you can bet that and I'm looking forward to the, uh, the 5950X is what I'm looking to upgrade to on November the 5th as well so I'll have a complete um am4 maxed out rig 6900 xt as well um so yeah you guys can look forward to some really really interesting uh, battles between my rtx 3090 and the 6900 xt when i get the cards and um yeah i'm looking forward to what the future holds it does look like we've definitely conquered 4k guys and you can do that decisively all for 999 dollars it appears i mean nvidia looking pretty bad out here right now i gotta say man I know how much I spent on my 39 um, RTX 3090 and at a grand this is an absolute steal if these performance figures are to be believed and um, you know I don't see why you shouldn't believe them everything seems to be um, quite accurate so far so you know we'll see how they do in ray tracing there hasn't been any on and off performance figures yet but you know I'm sure we'll get those when the independent reviews come out so let's talk a little bit about the release schedule. And um, we're all looking at, um, I think it is December now we're looking. December V8, we're looking at V6900 XT. I don't know why I have to wait so long for this, but I'll definitely, um, it's definitely worth the wait. And uh, some of the other cards, I believe they're coming out November the 15th or something like that. So um, not too long to wait now. Um, so yeah, looking forward to. Uh, um some independent reviews to get a more concrete um opinion on on what these cars can really do when they're tested independently over a broader suite of games but so far i'm very very impressed so that's pretty much my thoughts don't want to talk too much more about it um amd coming out swinging it's been a long time coming but it seems like they're back and and with um rdna3 already in the works nvidia man you hey if you keep if you sleep on amd now in cpu or gpu performance you're going to end up like intel that's the way it's looking so uh, that's pretty much it for me guys hopefully you've enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching